Now he's one of Britain's leading novelists. His family's literary credentials are second to none. And Martin Amis is certainly no stranger to controversy over his writings. But a very public row with his fellow academic, Terry Eagleton, has become the talk of the literary world. Eagleton has accused Amis of Islamophobia over his response to the September the 11th. Uh, Amos himself says he's pretty free of racism but admits to little impulses, urges and atavisms now and then. This week a leading newspaper columnist joined in the spat describing Amos as being with the beast. That second plane looked eagerly alive and galvanized with malice and wholly alien. Its glint was the world flash of a coming future. Martin Amis was writing about September the 11th in the days that followed it. At intervals, he's been writing about it ever since. Now it's embroiled him in one of the nastiest literary punch-ups for many years. The attack came from his colleague at Manchester University, the Marxist literary critic Terry Eagleton, in a preface to a new edition of his book Ideology. Amis's father Kingsley was... A racist, anti-Semitic boar. Amis Fees has clearly learned more from him than how to turn a shapely phrase. The younger Amos's writings are likened to the ramblings of a British National Party thug. It's a response to Amos's long essay to mark the fifth anniversary of the attacks and an interview he gave at around the same time. There's a definite urge, don't you have it, to say the Muslim community will have to suffer until it gets its house in order. What sort of suffering? Not letting them travel, deportation, further down the road. Curtailing of freedom, strip-searching people who look like they're from the Middle East or from Pakistan. Discriminatory stuff, until it hurts the whole community, and they start getting tough with their children. He recently referred to that as a mood experiment, at a time when his mood was already bleak. But a similar thought was expressed in his essay, reacting to his six-year-old daughter's bag being searched at an airport. I wanted to say something like, even Islamists have not yet started to blow up their own families on aeroplanes, so please desist until they do. Oh yeah, and stick to people who look like they're from the Middle East. He's made some things respectable now, in, in an instant, really. And he, you know, the effect of this man with his words is immense, he knows that. Why, do we, why are we talking about it today? Because it is Martin Amos. Amos has taken care to distinguish between Islam and Islamism in his writings, emphasizing his respect for Muhammad. But he also writes, Present-day Spain translates as many books into Spanish annually as the Arab world has translated into Arabic in the past 1,100 years. Like fundamentalist Judaism and medieval Christianity, Islam is totalist. That is to say, it makes a total claim on the individual. Indeed, there is no individual. He is a major figure on the literary scene and undoubtedly his words will have an impact. We just hope that he recognises what those ki that kind of language, the harm it can do. Last year, Pope Benedict drew fire for referring to Muhammad's call to spread the faith by the sword. Is Amos saying something similar? That there's a problem with Islam as well as with Islamism? And is it racist to say so? Well, Martin Amos is with us now. Martin Amos, um, let's just start with the Muslim community needing to suffer until they get tough with their children. All right, but let's make it clear that this was a distortion which you have faithfully reproduced here tonight. Um, I've written about 25,000 words since this interview appeared um, last August, um, and I stand by all of them. In the interview that has been taken up 14 months ago, I said I had a definite urge after the foiled plot last, the August before last, to blow up 10 airliners. And I would like to hear some moral disapproval of that particular scheme, you know, the grandiose viciousness of that idea, rather than being called you know, a thug and the espouser of vile views. I, I do not believe in any persecution of the Muslim community. I think that would be counterproductive. But I think we may wonder what an, um, an incensed nation state might do um, given these attacks on its people and its infrastructure. But isn't there a, a difficulty that you, in a sense, blame Islam collectively for the acts of, of, of madmen? I, bl I blame Islamism. I blame um, an ideology within a religion. I'm quite clear on that distinction. Um, 
I think 95% of Muslims in this country would dearly love to set their house in order. And we, we do suspect that there is some disorder, do we not, when people caress the thoughts of destroying 3,000 people on uh, airplanes when they, when they set a bomb for the Tiger Tiger nightclub on ladies' night. But I mean, you're not separating extremists when you say, for example, even Islamists have not yet started to blow up their own families on airplanes, so please desist until they do. This is when your daughter was searched, age six, her bag was searched. My, you said, oh yeah, and stick to people who look like they're from the Middle East. Yeah. In other words, don't bother to look at white people, just go for... No, don't, don't bother to, to strip search the fluffy duck of a six-year-old girl. Do you not find that ridiculous and a waste of time? And, and a, and a but it's misplaced, the it's the other side of it. A misplaced piety. Um, a polite fiction about what is really happening. But, but, but 